This is Late Night Lee Talks TV. I'm Late Night Lee, and I talk reality TV dating shows such as Love is Blind, Married at First Sight, and Ready to Love, just to name a few. So if you do enjoy watching that type of content, then please go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on when I upload a new video. This is a new channel, and I really do appreciate the love and support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to comment down below. Now let's get into Love is Blind season six. Clay, Clay is online blaming the edit for how he was portrayed on the show. And I'm here to tell you right now that we don't care. No, I'm here to tell you right now that is some BS. And yeah, we don't care because... I'm going to keep it real with you. I know that production be producing and they will go ahead and edit something down to like, I mean, they, they edit and they will misplace conversation. So you could have had a conversation days ago and they can clip parts of it and put it in a completely different scene. And, you know, it'll, they will make it seem like you said something that you may have said days ago or not in that particular moment. Yes, I know that they do those things, but here's the thing. You said that shit, son. You said it. Like you continue to go um, on this show talking about how you were not ready. You didn't feel ready. You kept talking about how your father was a cheater and he did this, that, and the third to your mom and how you have no examples of what um, true, positive, black love is. You said that shit, but you still have to say it. Even if they chop it and screw it, you still said that shit. And I don't want to hear anything about, oh, they're trying to hurt the black man. First of all, we saw Brett from season four. There was not one, I mean, not one bad thing that we could say about Brett outside of, you know, he was very particular about how his uh, suit pants um, fit when it came to the wedding. And hello, your wedding pictures last for, li for a lifetime. He, you know, works for a clothing and sneaker company. So I'm sure he is particular about his style. So that was like the only thing. And that wasn't bad. I'd rather be with a guy who, you know, wants to make sure he is tailored for his wedding. Yeah, I like that. But we never heard. We never heard. We never, ever, 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 ever heard. <laughs> we never. I mean, comment down below if you think I am wrong. But he never said one bad thing about Tiffany. Now, please comment down below if I am wrong and you heard him say and you remember him saying something bad about Tiffany, but I don't, I don't remember Brett saying anything bad about Tiffany. You know, I think he made some references to wanting to make sure that he was going to be, uh, you know, the perfect spouse to her and not be afraid. I remember he talked about how he lost his brother um, and how that impacted him. But he never said anything bad about, you know, his his fiance and now um, wife, Tiffany. He never expressed having doubts. And please, I, I, please, please do me a favor and comment down below if there's something that I don't remember. And if you recall him saying something bad, please let me know. Give me the episode and the time stamp and I will go back and I will look. Now, Kwame... Remember Kwame from season four? We saw him do nothing but disrespect Chelsea. And they tried to blame it on the edit. But again, you gave them the material. Kwame complained about how Portland was so much better than Seattle. And he did not want to move to Seattle. So being with Chelsea was, you know, an inconvenience to his life because then he would have to pick up and move to Seattle, even though he's not even originally from there. And he, you know, works from home 
but like that was that was such BS. Like you knew what it was when you were talking to her in the in the pods. You could have simply asked her, like you know, do you live in Portland or do you live in Seattle? If you live in Seattle, I'm good on you because I live in Portland and I'm not moving. Point blank in the period. And we saw how Kwame pretty much talked about how he needed his space from her. And it was just, it was really not, I mean, we were all, we were all surprised that Kwame said yes. The way he seemed to be so uninterested in Chelsea and how he pretty much pined over Micah. Like he was, it looked like he was waiting for Micah to pull the plug and say, yo, let's be together. Let's ditch our fiancés and be together. So much so that he had to apologize to Chelsea and her family during the season four reunion because of how badly he was portrayed. Now, he didn't blame it on the edit. And yeah, I know that there was definitely some editing there, but still, you did that shit, son. You did that shit. You did it. And they showed it. Now, do some people get more positive edits than others? Yes, I believe so. Um, Jimmy said that um, Jessica, season six, Jessica, you know, got a better edit because at times Jessica stormed out of the room or she was like more upset and they didn't show that. Like, okay. I mean, that's not hard to believe. She's a feisty one, I believe. But I don't want to hear that, you know, Clay got a bad edit. You know, you gave them the material and they ran with it. Okay. You know, um, what was his name from season two? And he uh, was married to Ayana. Like, he also got a bad edit because he really wanted to be with the Hispanic girl. And, you know, unfortunately for Ayana... She got called, like, you know, second choice. So it's just, I know that the editors be editing, right? Like, I get that. But at the end of the day, you have to give them the material. Things being taken out of context and all of that, you know, we can, as viewers, we can see when scenes are chopped and screwed. We can see. But what we did not see at all at any given time was Clay showing love to AD. When AD's mom said she told her that she would follow him and he, she talked, AD talked about how, you know, she was just so in love with him. And it was just like, girl, we're not seeing, we're not seeing him treat you in any way that's so loving. This is the same man who is not coming home because of an hour's drive when a good majority of Americans who work nine to five have to drive an hour or more to get to and from work every day. So the fact that he doesn't, like this is the honeymoon, this is the real honeymoon stage the first couple of weeks of knowing someone and he doesn't want to be inconvenienced by an hour drive. So he doesn't want to spend the night at home. It's like he doesn't come home. And even that night, that evening when um she, Clay and AD met with AD's mom, she said that she had planned something special and I guess he didn't come home in order for her to, you know, have fun with him and Yeah, I don't know what the heck she saw in him, but we definitely saw all of this negative, all these negative things. And at the end of the day, we know that the producers be producing and the editors be editing. Yes, but you have to give them the material. You have to give them the material to use. And you did. And they showed it. Point blank, period. This is Late Nali Talks TV. I'm Late Nali, and I am signing out. Comment down below your thoughts on Clay blaming producers and editing for how he was portrayed. Oh, you know what? Before I sign out, let me say this. 
I'm sick and tired of, um, especially black men, going on dating shows like um, Ready to Love, like Love is Blind, like Married at First Sight, and then going online and blaming production when it was their poor behavior. But the problem is a lot of these Kevin Samuel followers feel like they're the ish and they're never told that their ish stinks. And when they go on these TV shows, like, you know, Chris from season 12 of Married at First Sight and, you know, pretty much all the men from Ready to Love, (laughs) you know, and now Clay, you're finally being told by you know, just about everyone who watches the show and comments online that you ain't what you think you are. Like, you ain't all that, bro. And you actually need to do some work on yourself because you are coming across as a not-so-great person. But the problem is, when you're around nothing but yes men who act like you, You don't even see the error in your ways. So I really hope that these shows serve as a a good reflection point for people to see, you know, how they are portrayed. But a lot of these, and I'll say black men because these are the black men for the TV shows that I watch. They do tend to blame editing. You know, the men on Ready to Love, season nine, Fort Worth, they have been blaming editing. And it's like, at the end of the day, these were your actions, though. And the problem is, you don't feel like you do anything wrong. But then when you go online, when you go on these TV shows, and then you get flamed by the internet, it's like, oh, no. Instead of having, you know, that self-reflection and saying, You know, I didn't realize that that's how I came across. I didn't realize that so many people think that that's those are not good qualities. And maybe I'll go to therapy and change and do the work. No, 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 no. These men will just blame editing. And I do know that editing sometimes sucks. But again, you gave them the material and they used it. This is Leighton Ali Talks TV. I'm Leighton Ali and I am signing out. Comment down below your thoughts on Clay and how so many of these men go on these reality shows and they like to blame editing instead of actually doing the self-reflection and doing the work to change. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like the video.